It sure doesn't look icy, does it? It is. Apple Air Tags. They're all over the news the last several months. Apparently a lot of people are using them for very mischievous reasons. The question I've been asked several times by you good folks is what I think of them and is there a good reason to use them maybe on your tractor or your ATV or your snowmobile up here at the cabin? <laughs> well, let's find out today on GP Outdoors. Today I'm going to run a few tests. I am going to give you kind of a high level overview of the AirTag. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on all of its features and functionalities. There are a ton of YouTube videos that can show you that. Today, the real point was to answer the question, does this $39 device operate or provide some kind of an effective solution or risk mitigation to somebody stealing my tractor out of my cabin when I'm not here? And can I find that tractor? The fact is the AirTag is not designed as a GPS tracking tool. In fact, it is not a GPS tracking tool. However, the fact that it's not designed to do it doesn't mean it doesn't do it well. Let's find out. So hey, let's get to it. This AirTag is a handy little device. And hey, for 39 bucks and no monthly fees or anything, it might not be a bad solution. This first test is down in the city. So as you folks know, I live in Toronto, Canada. Big city, large population, a whole lot of iPhones walking around. And this is a key which we'll get back to later. I can't tell you technically exactly how they work, but I do know that they basically use a community network type approach. In other words, people are walking around with an iPhone, they all have Bluetooth, and somehow through the Bluetooth, it picks up the signal or pings the, the AirTag to identify its location. However, if you have an Android phone, it's not gonna help, unless you've downloaded a very specific app that's required in order to find the, the AirTag. And since it's reasonable to assume in my estimation that virtually nobody's done it, except for the odd person, we're just gonna to have to go ahead, considering that there's about 1 billion iPhones in use today, according to Apple. So it's highly probable in a highly densely populated area that somebody's gonna walk by your AirTag. So our first test, I threw it in the back of my wife's car when she was on her way to grocery shop. She left and sure enough, about 12 to 15 minutes later, I got a positive notification on my phone and that positive notification gave me an exact address of where it found the AirTag. And sure enough, it was bang on. Exact address, gave me a location on a map and in fact, you can get directions to drive there to go find that AirTag or in this case, to find my hypothetically stolen ATV. So it worked great, came very quickly. One consideration though is in order to get a positive push notification of where it is, you actually have to go into the Find My app and you have to set it to tell you or to notify you when it finds the air tag. And it'll only do it once. We'll come back to that later. So hey, test in the city, all worked out great. Let's head north. We're in a very rural area here, not a lot of people around. So the demographic is a little different and the conditions have changed now. First test, I gave it to Husky Bob and asked him to take it home for the night. However, I did not click on the option to notify me when it's found, so it never notified me. However, when you do go into the app and you push on your ATV or on that Apple R tag, it will come up and tell you exactly where it found it, and sure enough, it was once again bang on correct. Comes up on the map, and I can get directions there to go find it. But again, remember, Husky Bob's got an iPhone. I did test it, and I did turn on the notify when found, and sure enough, about 15 minutes later, it sent a push notification to my screen, confirm the address again. Again, two conditions. Bob's got an iPhone and he's close by with his Bluetooth. Second test, let's head over to neighbor Guy's place. And this time I'm gonna put the air tag in his woodshed. Key consideration here is that nobody in Guy's family uses iPhones. They use Androids. And of course they don't have that tracking app that's required to be downloaded. So I wanna see how long it's gonna take before somebody with an iPhone drops by a guy's place, because without the iPhone, I'll never find that ATV. Ah. So here's where the rubber hits the road. Eight and a half hours in Guy's woodshed. What I did forget is that Guy actually owns an iPad, an Apple iPad. It's less than a year old but it's been sitting in his house, which is about 150 to 160 feet away from the woodshed. But sitting out there all day long, did not detect it, did not notify me. 
So, headed over to Guy's place and we brought the iPad into the workshop and we also called old Husky Bob because he's got an iPhone and said, hey, come on by, let's have a coffee and chat. So we had the iPhone, which is an iPhone 11, it's about four or five months old, plus a brand new iPad in the workshop about 70, 75 feet away from the woodshed. And after an hour and a half, still did not detect the AirTag sitting in the woodshed. I finally got a notification on that AirTag after I took it out and brought it back to my cabin close to my iPhone. Then I got the notification saying it was back at the cottage. I think that's your proof positive. A few more things I wanted to talk about before we wrap up today. Bluetooth. I've done a little bit of research, but not a lot. But according to the folks at Bluetooth, there's been a number of different versions or updates to Bluetooth over the decades. And right now, Bluetooth 5, they say, could actually transmit up to a kilometer away. But there's a whole bunch of different factors that impact the range of that Bluetooth, including how strong a device can transmit it. So a kilometer away, not so sure you're going to get that with a phone. And clearly after testing it today at Guy's place, you're not getting 50 feet, 60 feet, 70 feet. You're not. A couple other things to think about. When the AirTag is in motion, in other words, using our hypothetical example, somebody backs into my driveway one night, grabs the trailer with my ATV and takes off. For as many hours as they're driving, or as long as the air tag is in motion, it can't be detected and it will not report back to you. It's not until it's sitting stationary for a period of time, and that period of time is a big question mark because Apple won't confirm it. It pings the device on a regular basis, but it's been estimated from what I've read and what I've seen on YouTube, etc., from different people, is that it's roughly every 15 minutes it tries to ping these air tags. And that kind of lines up with my testing down in the city because it was about 12 to 15 minutes each time that I got the ping. But you have to remember that as long as it's in motion, it does not signal or it's not detectable. It has to be sitting stationary. One nice thing about the AirTag is that when I did pick it up out of Guy's shed, it was chirping again. Constantly chirping every five to 10 seconds, it would chirp again which I guess is to notify people that there's an air tag sitting there that's not connected with its owner or close to its owner. Interesting. After 22 hours at Husky Bob's place, Bob never got that notification on his phone he's supposed to that says that there's a foreign air tag close to your phone. If you remember, there are two anti-theft devices or anti-theft processes that Apple says they have in place. One is if somebody slips an air tag into your your purse or on your car and it's close to your iPhone for a period of time, whatever that period is, it's supposed to pop up a notification on your phone telling you that somebody else's AirTag is with you. And then it also, the AirTag is supposed to start chirping after a certain period of time so that you, it can help you find it in case somebody's, you know, dropped an AirTag into your purse or on your car. Bobby never got the notification However, when I did pick it up after being with him for 22 hours, the air tag again, it was chirping. It's just not a really loud chirp. So you've got to get pretty close to it before you can hear it. The battery indicator, it's a good benefit because you can see when you look on your air tag or your Find My application and you see the ATV or the air tag, you'll see a battery indicator and it'll tell you when the battery's running out. So I think that's a positive thing because at least you know when the battery is dead so you don't have to estimate whether or not it's still working or not. So hey, interesting test. One of the nice things I do have to say is that we've been through a deep freeze here for about a week and several days were somewhere between negative 23 and negative 28 degrees Celsius and we've never had positive temperatures. I think the warmest temperature we've had here is about negative 13, negative 14 and I've purposely left that air tag outside all these days and it still seems to be working. So at least we know it's, it's good for the Canadian winter. So hey, there you have it, proof positive. I did it, you saw it. Is it of any value to buy one of these $39 devices and stick it on the tractor? Well, decision is yours. 
does it help to mitigate the risk or maybe give you a little bit more advantage to finding that tractor if somebody steals it? It's up to you, my friends. Thanks so much for sticking around with me today. I hope it was valuable or provided a little bit of information. Have a wonderful week with your families. Please be kind to each other. And I'll see you again right here on GP Outdoors. Cheers. Ha, ha, ha.